Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a specific example of heteroscedasticity. So the example which I'm going to give here is going to be, let's say we were interested in finding out how an individual's wage level depended on their level of education. So we might estimate that there is some sort of linear relationship between the level of wages which an individual obtains and their level of education. So we're expecting here that beta is greater than zero. So as an individual has a higher level of education, they can expect to obtain on average a higher level of wage. So let's say we have a whole sample of data on individual's education level and their wage level. So let's say we expect that as an individual's level of education increases, then they can expect to obtain a higher level of wage. However, as an individual sort of level, as an individual's level of education increases, that individual also has more choice in terms of how they spend their time. Perhaps that individual cares a lot about money or uh, earning a lot of money to, to take care of their family, so they choose to become an investment banker, which means that given their level of education, they actually obtain a sort of above average level of wages. Or perhaps that individual is really interested in teaching, so they go and become a university lecturer, whereby they earn a significantly lower salary than they would have done if they became an investment banker. So note that if I was to estimate this above model here, then perhaps that would mean that I sort of fit a straight line to my data, which on average shows the effect of education on wages. So perhaps the slope of this line is unbiased. But note that the distance of points from the line, on average, is increasing along with my education variable, along with my independent variable. So in this circumstance, we have the case of heteroscedasticity. Well, sort of writing that mathematically, we have that the variance of our sort of error, so the distance of points from the line, is increasing along with our independent variable education. So perhaps it's equal to some sort of number times uh, the level of education. So in this circumstance, the variance is increasing with education. And this is in contrary to the gauss markov assumption of homoscedastic errors, which says that the variance of our errors given our independent variable education should be a constant. So in this circumstance, we know that least squared estimates are, or at least squared estimators are no longer blue. In specific, there are other linear unbiased estimators, which we'll come on to discuss in the future, things which we call weighted least squares or generalized least squares, which are also unbiased and linear, but are better. They have a lower sampling variance. So that means that more often than not, they will get closer to the true population parameter, B to P, if we use those techniques on the sample. So in this circumstance, we can see that least squared estimators are no longer best. Intuitively, what's happening is that there is some sort of error structure here, and it's a predictable error structure. And because we are not taking into account this sort of extra information in our estimators, that means that our estimators aren't as accurate as they could be, or aren't as reliable as they could be, if we did take into account this extra information. Note that because of this heteroscedasticity, we don't necessarily have bias in our estimate of the effect of education on wages, because our line still in general goes through the sort of center of the points here. Written mathematically, we still can sort of assume that the expectation of our error given our independent variable education is equal to zero. So as education increases, I don't in general get a sort of either an upward bias or a downward bias in my errors. So my least squared estimators are still unbiased in this circumstance.